What is up YouTube? This is Vault here, back in today with you guys another new speed duel match duel video. So a couple of days ago, or a few days ago as well, you guys seen the Gravekeeper Parasite uh, versus the Serpent Knight um, deck uh, right there in that speed duel match, as well as you guys probably seen the Gravekeeper Parasite uh, deck profile by now already. And I know a lot of you guys are really, really interested in competitive uh, dueling. Uh, for speed duels, I want to see more competitive matches and clashes between two really, really high profile, high caliber decks that are currently in this meta and in this format. So I decided to do something a little bit extra sweet for you guys. Uh, this here with this bonus video of the Gravekeeper Parasite versus the Gear Freed Parasite right here. So just so you guys know, we are playing a l much more competitive in this speed duel match right here. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but let's just go right into it right here. So the two decks are exactly the same deck profiles you guys seen on the channel already. So it's just a really, really nice, sweet thing to really want to showcase you guys how it's like for these two decks to go against each other. So, uh, okay, there's a little bug right here. So I don't know what's going on with my deck, but... Um, of course, both of us are playing uh, Weevil Underwood, the Cocoon of Ultra Evolution skill, makes total sense. We want the Stone Paper Scissors, so we want them to go first. They're going to set and pass. So usually our, our um, suspicion for this set monster, it's going to be Command Knight for most cases. 1900 uh, defense is pretty strong. We opened up not... Uh, okay, I guess. Uh, actually, we opened up pretty good, I will have to say. Um, I, I did mention before, I actually might want to play uh, Gravekeeper Ambusher uh, in my deck rather than uh, Spear Soldier. I play quite a few. I play like two Spear Soldiers, but I might change it up uh, sometime down the road. But we're going to play defensive as well, and we're going to set our back rows and just pass our turn and see what we can do from here. Uh, immediately then, they flipped up their gear free. They normal summon Sphere Karibo. That's really interesting. So I think they're going for a really, really aggressive play right in the beginning right here and they're just going to do the cocoon and they want to do massive damage already i think and special summon one from the deck and i think they're going to special summon one from their hand as well so that's really really good uh right here we can floodgate the one that was summoned with parasite paranoid so uh that goes down so we're just not going to take that massive damage i think they're just going swing in with a ham of otk already they want to just go perfectly huge into us and they do attack us with gear freed we're going to search our oracle right here Always search Oracle, which is really, really great. We're gonna have to take this uh, 3500. Uh, we can either use a Rite of Spirit to play defense, uh, but we actually want to keep our Recruiter so that we can Rite of Spirit afterwards. We'll, we'll take the big gamble right here. We'll take that massive blow. A lot of people don't want to take that massive blow, but we, we'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll go for a bigger play right here because then we're gonna want to use our Rite of Spirit to bring back uh, Recruiter potentially, and then we can bring our Gravekeeper Oracle. Uh, when we need to because that's like instant oracle and it's just really good so right here we're going to do our parasite paranoid first uh, we obviously want to get rid of their moth uh, so we really took advantage of them being way too aggressive right early on and uh, it's really about being patient i know many of us know by now that you know if you gotta you're trying to bait out the opponent to use the cocoon first whoever uses the cocoon first uh the person who still has the cocoons uh, the player who has still had the cocoon ready second is going to have a greater advantage usually. But it's not always the case, but this is so far what the case has been. Uh, we're going to write a spirit right here, and we're just going to do our Oracle. We're going to blast their uh, face down monster, and we're going to do lots of damage right here. Recruiter lets us search as well, which is really great. So we're going to blast off that moth. We're going to set a kunai, also really good defensive, and we're just going to go right in for lots of damage back at them right here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't game them right here or OTK right them, but you know, we managed to even out with them with only 300 life points already. So immediately in this first duel, really intense already, like high caliber, high powerful decks, they're gonna uh, shuffle back their moth and they just really desperately need that card already, we can tell. They're playing defensive right now, as we can see already, so we have nothing to worry about. They're just gonna go uh, a little bit more uh, safe on the safe side, so I decided to set Recruiter just because just in case if anything was gonna be game-changing that they're gonna play that we at least still have a back row or some kind of backup uh, defense monster rather than just go full in with attack monsters. We could have did Spear Soldier right here and attack the defense, but again, you know, it could be a Command Knight and we might not be able to run over it, but although we do have Kunai, so we're not too worried, but we want to be on the safe side any, uh, regardless, so we are playing safer right here. We're just gonna attack with the Muffin, turns out to be the Yomi ship, so surprise. I mean, not a huge surprise, I guess. I mean, that is my <laughs> in my deck profile. Uh, should have no noticed, but you know, great, not too bad. So they even out right here back again, 
and uh, I guess maybe in a certain certain circumstance from the last turn I could have gamed them if I were a little bit more confident right there but again I was you know trying to be careful so once again shuffle back moth uh, it always makes sense to shuffle moth usually so that you can reuse your parasites uh, you know we we play three parasites and we play two moths in here so or, or maybe even one actually I can't quite remember two or one uh, we sometimes switch it in between the oracles as well but let's say we have two, you know, it just makes more sense to shuffle the moth back so that when we do draw into it, it's not a dead draw since we do play three parasites and we can utilize the parasite still. Uh, so both of us finished using the uh, both uh, skills already. Right here, we can go for a very big play. We're going to summon a Gravekeeper Spear Soldier and just attack straight in the gear freak right here and, and like give them some threat. See if they're going to be scared because uh, we we, we're telling them, oh, we have a Kunai Whip Chain right here. Uh, and they let us go through, so we're gonna go attack right there. And with 100 life points left, this <laughs> is getting a little bit intense. We should have maybe attack with Oracle as well, but I was trying to play around the Windstorm, so I just my main goal really there was to get rid of the gear feed first. That was the most important thing. And uh, once again, they play a back row and uh, pass their turn. Uh, we got a bottomless, so that's really great. I mean, not bottomless, sorry, floodgate travel. And we can go a bit more aggressive this time. Uh, if it was a command knight, we're fine with no damage to them, and it turns out to be, so there we go. So once again, uh, moving into the second duel for side deck, be sure to check out the deck profile right there. I have the full side deck for you guys already, so definitely check that out. And I really appreciate it, as always, if you guys could hit that like button, subscribe to the Vault channel for more awesome speed duel content right here. And if you guys love, love the speed duel content, be sure, be sure to subscribe. That's the best way to let me know that you guys want more and I'll make more videos of course as this is the main focus of the channel. So right here we probably sided in uh, Oracle uh, and swapped back out uh, Moth and possibly we even did, um, we have Eradicating Aerosol in our side deck just in case we're going against any insect or moth decks you know they're so popular and I thought it was a pretty neat card to actually side in sometimes which can really help you change the whole tide. Uh, so that was the main cards I swapped out really. I can't remember for the other stuff what we really sided in, but I guess we'll find out as we move along and I'll let you guys know which one is a side card, uh, side deck card. Uh, they want us to go first, of course, so we're gonna play a uh, recruiter, we're gonna set our back row, we're good, to, we're good, we got a good combo right here, you know, if they summon a monster attacking their recruiter, we can just basically floodgate that monster immediately, bring out our oracle, and then pop their back row and swing in for great damage next turn, so we're not, not afraid. We're just gonna do that right here, put that in face down, it can't be face up anymore. Uh, at this point, you were thinking, should we actually uh, do the oracle? Uh, we actually want to hold off a little bit. We want them to summon another monster, floodgate it again, and then the next turn, we'll oracle and we get to pop two monsters, which is even more worth it for us. So they do right here, they do play the hyper hammer head, and we do floodgate that right away. I know it might be too risky or uh, too ballsy in the beginning, because we now just wasted, we didn't really waste the floodgates, but we're just, you know, using our floodgates way too early. We normally want to save it for the parasite moth summon, so that, you know, it stops it. Because uh, now we have nothing to stop the moths really from summon being summoned from Parasite Paranoid. We can't stop from the skill anyways. Uh, so right here we're gonna do that. You know we're gonna go according to as planned, and we're gonna pop those face downs. Uh, and then in return they floodgate us. Uh, so uh, with Recruiter we're allowed to search, so we search out a Spear Soldier, and then we're gonna set our Dust and we're gonna pass and see what they're gonna do. Right here they can easily run us over with a gear with a gear freed if they want to. Uh, but we're going to end phase Dust Tornado them right here, so we got rid of uh, another uh, Flight Gate, which is good. So, got to ride a Spirit, not too bad, so we can bring back like, uh, another monster later, such as Recruiter, or even Oracle if it later does get to go to the graveyard. We'll go in for some damage and see what, how it goes. They'll take it, makes sense, um, and then we'll see what they have. So lots of back rows still, and they're going to play their Parasite right here, okay? They're going to do their Cocoon. Uh, once again, they are the first one to go for it, but I believe, you know, right here they did a good play. Bringing out two moths when you can, I mean, there's nothing else they could really do, so... Makes total sense. Right here, they actually got the pressure, and they swing in into us for massive damage once again, right here. And... What a top deck. I can't believe it. Wow. Miracles do happen. Dr miracle draws, destiny draws, whatever it is. We got into a Parasite Paranoid right here, which is really great. We're gonna play that immediately, because... We have no other plays, and they dust tornado us, unfortunately. But that's okay. But really, really glad that we actually have another moth right here, so we can actually special summon moth uh, with parasite paranoid's effect. At least we can cocoon, but that's okay. Uh, right here, we're gonna desperately sort of need another card. I feel like um, because next turn they could just run us over and then just swing in uh, for 
damage and then win the game as long as they get a monster. So we're gonna, yeah, right here in this situation, we desperately need a card. So we're gonna shuffle it and uh, we're gonna draw and then we got a floodgate, which is really great. So we do play free floodgates because it just combos so well with Oracle. You guys can see that we were able to pop two monsters from there. So we're good to go. Uh, we're a little bit more confident right here. We're just gonna end there and threaten them to make them think we have Kunai with Chain once again. So if they have, um, if they do run in with their moth to our moth, if we Kunai them, then that's the end of their moths and they can't go over us. So, but they are going deep and strong right here. Uh, we're just letting them know uh, they, they summon too quickly. So we're just gonna do the floodgate on the command knight anyways. I was gonna do that no matter what because we have to, otherwise we're gonna lose. And uh, they do swing in right here once again, and yeah, we do have to take that together. Swing in here for game, and we'll just play Battle of Spirit. And we'll put a Recruiter so we can do a search uh, to add an extra card, which is really great. Um, but right now, we're relying again to see if we can actually get a Parasite. If we do, we get a Parasite Paranoid, that'd be great, because then that will be changing the tide back to us, and let's see right here we got a dust tornado we can still play defensively as long as they don't get a monster so we can do it slowly bit by bit see how it goes uh they're gonna use their second part as well they're gonna shuffle their moth and they're gonna draw a card um which makes total sense right now so they used already uh the full skew, uh, skill and they do get a monster so uh they do attack with command knight we're gonna dust tornado their back row we know we lost this one but we just want to see what they have there no matter anyways uh, so we can sort of like plan for ahead to get more knowledge and information on their deck overall uh, so that's usually what we want to do. And they do attack, um, Social Spear Soldier, but it's not going to help because they're going to swing in with the mop and they're going to take game two right here. So pretty intense, once again, a uh, pretty, pretty cool, uh, match duel right here. And if you guys really like this match duel, you know, um, really be sure to hit that like button. You know, I apologize for some longer videos. Uh, these are usually longer. I try to talk a bit faster, give you guys more generic uh commentary on these uh duels right here so you guys can enjoy it and watch it for fun but i apologize if i do take uh, too much time sometimes but you know i hope you guys learn from it i want to give you guys as much detail and as much uh feedback and of, of my thought process uh overall in the gameplay to you guys as much as possible and you know really give you guys quality knowledge and how i think when i'm playing and i hope that really helps you guys out so once again we want them to go first uh we did once again we didn't we kept the side deck fairly the same uh if you guys want to check out the side deck be sure to check out the, that profile we'll see if we draw into any of our side deck cards i kind of can't remember at this point in this replay got law of back row we're just gonna set them all past our turn uh we're gonna see what they do right here we're gonna most likely be parasiting them first uh before they do, so we're gonna have to, um, have to do it before. Yeah, do it before they do. They attack into us. We'll let them. We'll take it. Uh, we'll end phase dust tornado that, and it turns out to be, to be a windstorm. And let's see what we draw into. So we drew into blast fear. Blast fear. Uh, I remember I do play one of in the main deck. Yes, I do. I play one of this in the main deck, uh, just because it combos very well with a uh, recruiter. And um, you know, many people usually think we're setting a recruiter, but sometimes you can, if you just play one blast fear, you can just really, really screw them over to make them uh, play a lot more passive and respect you uh, and respect that some of your face down monsters can potentially become a blast fear and you know blast fear is game changing initially so really really good card i love it i might even like bump this up even if i can if i have more spots but we're gonna go in aggressive we're gonna go in for an otk right here because i think we can uh so we're gonna treat you and oh response interesting okay so right here we're gonna think, okay, so they use Parasite Paranoid on their own Command Knight as well and respond to our Parasite Paranoid, knowing that basically um, we're both gonna bring out a Moth uh, at this point. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, and uh, we're gonna bring out a Moth from our deck first. So we do keep two Moths. It's always good to keep two Moths. I know some of you guys won't only wanna play one uh, because one is all you need. I, I agree, like one is really all you need. If you're going for like a full shot combo and you really, really want to go super aggressive right in the beginning and you know that the moment when you summon your moth and all you need is one for you to take the game away, that's totally fair. I totally understand that, but I personally still like two more. It keeps the consistency. You can double up on the damage. I really like that. I, I would risk the brickiness for that, but that's the reason why I play 21 cards in the deck because it, you know, it elevates the ratio a little bit more. So if you're playing 20 cards in your deck, in your main deck, then playing two moths can be a bit more risky because you can end up breaking very uh, much more often than you do. But that's the reason why I play 21. Sometimes you might even want to play 24, 
to actually make it even better. So, yeah, we both bring out a moth. He brings out one from the hand, but we get to bring out one from our deck and from our hand, which is really great. And I think we can probably go for a game right here. Uh, we're going to floodgate that one. Anyways, no matter what, uh, we're Parasite, par the one that was summoned, we're Parasite Paranoid, and we're just gonna take our game right here. You can see how powerful we can be, you know. Um, like I said from before, not always the person who uses uh, Cocoon second is gonna be having the greater advantage. We're using it first before they do, before they even get a chance to, and we're just dealing a massive damage to them right here and taking an OTK game right here. And oh, I, did, I actually have Eradicating, so if they do, we're able to survive one more turn. They would have been blown up our field right here, and that's really good. That's why I side that card as well, because uh, Eradicating just gets rid of the moth problem immediately. It's such a powerful monster, such a very difficult monster to go over usually, just by bare attack, and it's just really difficult to deal with. So Eradicating really, really just solves that problem. That's why I like it. So that's it for game three. We took the whole match two and one against each other. I personally think, uh, I know a lot of you guys uh, might debate and say gear freed moth or uh, gear freed parasite is usually generically stronger and better than the gravekeeper one but i think the gravekeeper one is also really really good they're both really really strong in their own aspect they have really really good effects on each um each individual individual decks uh, between one another and i think it's a very good evenly match against one of them between both of them so it really comes down on um one could beat the other at any given time, which I kind of like. That means, you know, it doesn't mean that there's just one V1 deck that's like on the, on the top that's like literally wrecking every other deck right now. I, I'm, I'm glad that I guess there's a different variant. But of course, I know a lot of you guys are really sick with the Moth and the Parasite stuff that has been going on around lately. So I'm going to try to do more uh, unique deck profiles uh, coming up and I hope you guys enjoy them as well. If you guys are looking forward to it, be sure to hit that like button and end this video. Subscribe to the Evolve channel so you don't miss out. But once again, Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, speed duel match right here, and yeah, if you did, you know, subscribing is the best way to let me know that you guys want more of this content, and I really, really appreciate your help. And uh, yeah, if you guys, be sure to check out the description down below for the Evolve Facebook page, Instagram, be sure to follow me on there as well, like the Facebook page. Got lots of posts so you guys can keep updated whenever there's something new as well coming out, and yeah, really appreciate it. And yeah, share, share this channel with any of your friends or family who plays uh, speed duels with you guys. And yeah, I really hope you guys learn from this channel overall. So once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video. And this is a vault signing out.